Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to the third episode in our mini-series on spin locks. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be covering an optimization to our spin lock called Back Off. Now, in the first episode of the series, we covered the basics of spin locks, and in the second episode, we looked at an optimization for a spin lock called Spinning Locally, and we used this to help mitigate some of the L1 data cache misses we were seeing due to coherence. Now, what we're trying to address in this video is the high uh, amount of contention and bursty contention we're seeing for a spin lock when one of our threads releases the lock. And to understand this problem a little bit better, let's go ahead and look at our implementation from last time in this file spinlocally.cpp. So down here we have our spin lock implementation. We're going to be focusing on our lock method here. So just as a reminder of how this lock method works, all right, whenever a thread tries to lock or spin lock, it calls this lock method. The first thing we do is an atomic exchange trying to grab the lock. If we ended up grabbing the lock, we return immediately. Otherwise, we fall into the second while loop where we just read the state of the lock over and over and over as fast as possible, waiting for the lock to become free. And as soon as the lock becomes free, the process repeats again. So we try and do an atomic exchange again um, and potentially either return or um, go back down into this while loop. Now, the heavy amount of contention and the bursty contention we're seeing are occurring because of the way that we're waiting inside of this while loop. So for all of our threads that didn't get the lock, say the first time, all of our other threads are going to be waiting here in this while loop, closely monitoring the state of our lock by reading you know, the state of the lock over and over and over. And as soon as the thread that's holding the lock releases it, all of our other threads are going to break out of this while loop and try and do this atomic exchange at the same time. So we have you know, these short bursts of high amount of contention. And this is really wasteful uh, when we think about it. Um, because the way that our lock works, only one of these threads is actually going to get the lock, right? So if we have eight threads all doing atomic exchange, only one of them will actually get the lock, right? And then all of our other threads um, will end up falling down into this while loop and having to pull, waiting for the state of the lock to become free again. So how exactly do we say limit the number of threads that break out of this while loop and try and do this atomic exchange um, when one of our threads releases the lock. Well, one of the ways that we can uh, increase the probability that fewer threads will break out of this while loop is by implementing this optimization called back off, where we insert a short delay inside of our while loop. That way, you know, some of our threads will be waiting inside of that delay portion of the while loop, while say other threads um, are reading the state of the lock and maybe break out. So, you know, some threads will be waiting while other threads are already doing the atomic exchange, trying to grab the free lock. So we're hopefully decrease the amount of bursty contention that we see. So let's go ahead and see an implementation of this, and it'll be this active back off implementation. Um, where active just means that we're going to be actively doing something during this pause period. So here's our spin lock implementation. And the only real change that we've made is, is inside of our lock method. So let's just kind of go through the functionality. So, you know, whenever a thread tries to grab the lock, it'll call this lock method. And the first thing we do is exactly the same. We do an atomic exchange trying to grab the lock. If we get the lock, we just return, same as last time. Otherwise, we fall down into this while loop again, where we pull the state of the lock, waiting for it to become free. But instead of waiting for our lock to become free as fast as possible, we've now inserted delay using a simple for loop here that just counts up to 100, right? So that's going to act as our active back off here and our short delay between each time we check the state of the spin lock using this load. So the idea being that um, when one of our threads releases the lock, some of our threads will be waiting inside of this for loop you know, going through the 100 iterations, while other threads might be ready to break out and do an atomic exchange and try and grab the lock. So hopefully we have less contention during those times. Now let's go ahead and benchmark this like we have with our other two implementations of spin locks. And we're going to be doing it in much the same way using Google Benchmark. 
and we're going to be spawning some number of threads, you know, one, two, four, and eight threads that will all run the exact same function, this ink function here. Um, so a very simple high contention scenario for our spin lock where each thread for 100,000 iterations tries to grab the lock, increment some shared value, and then release the lock. So let's go ahead and compile this. So we'll go ahead and use uh, G++ and we'll do all of our optimizations that we've seen before. So O3 optimizations, um, mArch and mTune is equal to native um, and turn on link time optimization. And we'll go ahead and use perf record. Um, that way we can look at the assembly as well to see what's going on at the assembly level. All right, so there's our, um, there's our timing numbers and then we can use perf report um, to look at the assembly. So we'll see some similarities with the assembly we've seen in the past and a few differences as well. So just like um, every other uh, implementation of our spin lock we've seen at the assembly level, the first thing we do is this exchange here. So this is our atomic exchange trying to grab the lock. So the first thing we do is we try to grab the lock. If we end up getting the lock, right? So we test to see if we get the lock. If we get the lock, we jump down, we increment our shared value, and then this final exchange is just freeing the lock, right? If we don't get the lock, right? So if we go back up here and this test fails, we end up going directly to this move here. This is us reading the state of the lock again. So here we're going to read the state of the lock, see if the lock is free again. If the lock is free again, we of course go back up and try and grab the lock again using this atomic exchange. But right, if the lock isn't free, that's when we go, we go into our back off phase, right? That short pause that we've inserted um, using that for loop. Uh, and we use that um, volatile um, qualifier for our integer for our loop counter just to make sure that that for loop didn't get optimized away. And a lot of this code um, in between here is the result of that volatile qualifier. So what we end up seeing um, inside of this short pause loop here is, you know, we first set up, you know, our int i is equal to zero here by just using this move of zero. And then down here, we actually have, um, this is our pause loop. So in every iteration of this loop, we load i, um, our, our, the variable we're using to increment each iteration. We increment i, we store i, and then we load i again and see if we're still um, less than or equal to 99, which is hex 0x63. So all of this code in the center here, uh, which may seem kind of wasteful, this is our um, pause loop, right? But just because we have so much code here isn't necessarily a problem. And the reason being is we're specifically using this for loop just to you know create a short delay between the times that we're reading the state um, of our spin lock, right? So all of these instructions are here just for filler, right? So they're not, it's not necessarily a bad thing that this section has increased in size by a, a significant quantity. Okay, so that's that's how we're, uh, our spin lock implementation looks um, from the assembly level, but you know, we still of course have to compare the performance to our last optimization, which was our optimization um, with spinning locally. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll run our benchmark again called active back off. And of course, one of the things that you might see here is that the performance numbers will change from run to run. And that's just uh, based on thread scheduling. It's non-deterministic and it will change slightly each time. So you should mainly be looking for kind of you know, high order trends and maybe very large gaps in performance. Okay, so there's our active back off implementation and let's run our spin locally implementation to compare. So of course, we're, we're not gonna see much of a difference um, in our single threaded case, right? There's really no contention for a lock, just a single thread. So they're both at around one millisecond. But we immediately see some you know, huge performance improvements, you know, starting from two threads. So for our active back off implementation that also uses spin locally, we're at you know, 3.15 milliseconds you know, instead of 7.54 milliseconds for just spinning locally. So over a 2x improvement there, same thing over a 2x improvement 
um, from 14 millisec or from 36.2 milliseconds down to 14 milliseconds when we're using four threads and down from 97 milliseconds to 55 milliseconds when we're at eight threads here. So by decreasing that burst decontention we have for our, um, for our spend lock, we're seeing a huge performance improvement here. Now, that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video, but there's a couple things that um, you should keep in the back of your, of your mind, and they're things that we're going to address um, in later videos, right? So if we go ahead and go back to our active backoff implementation, you'll see inside of our lock method, we're going through this for loop that we're using to pause, um, right, our thread, or basically insert a short delay inside of this while loop, we're going through 100 iterations here. So where did this number come from? So this is something that's experimentally determined. So we could increase this, we could decrease this. It's really going to depend on our specific use case for the spin lock, right? So that's one of the questions. Um, now, another very important question to ask is, um, is just doing, say, a for loop like this the best way that we can, say, um, pause while we're um, spinning inside of that loop and we're trying to in induce some sort of um, delay, right? And we're going to look at, uh, in our, our next video, a case of passive backoff where we use a dedicated x86 instruction called pause, right, to insert a... Uh, a fixed delay inside of our pipeline. That way, not only do we get the benefits of inserting that delay, but we can save some power as well by not just constantly executing, you know, a ton of instructions, right? But again, that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video. As always, you can find all this code at my GitHub page at github.com slash coffee before arch. So if we go under repositories and then we look at spin locks here, you can find all of the implementations um, that we've looked at and some of the implementations for later videos. So here we have our naive implementation from the first video, our, um, our spin locally implementation from the second, and our active back off implementation that we just looked at in this video. But again, that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.